Welcome back to Bangers Bricks, everybody. My name is Ben. In today's video, we are moving around almost every single Lego modular in the Lego City to find a better layout, as well as going through a $300 Lego mail day. Now, please make sure you guys like and subscribe as we are super close to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm excited to do another giveaway at that 1,000 subscriber mark. Let's get started. Here we go. Before we get a chance to take a look at our $300 Lego Mail Day, I want to talk a little bit more about how we're going to be reorganizing and rearranging some of the different modulars within the Lego City. I am super pumped as we have been working with the same layout for probably the past four or five months, and honestly, I'm just getting bored. Now, we have some beautiful larger sets over on this side of the Lego City. We do have the Courthouse. We do have Assembly Square. We have the downtown, uh, almost a downtown diner. We have the Bowling Alley over here with the new addition for the second floor, and I I really want to just kind of expand things and break this chunk of modulars up over here as it just kind of looks so uniform that it just all they all kind of blend in with one another nothing really stands out so i want to try to rearrange a few things see what we can come up with and then kind of go from there when it comes over to the greener area we have some big plans as well on top of rearranging the modulars in the Lego City, I do want to take a quick look at the greener area and a couple updates that we'll make over here as well. I really love our rock platform that we made. I think the Disney Castle looks great up here. I also love the way the treehouse looks. But if we're going to declutter or move something off of the second tier over here, the rock platform, it'll probably end up being the Haunted House or the Manor Von Baron. Now, I may end up trying to mills plate that, get it in the Lego City, or what I'll probably try to do is take it down and replace it with the Winnie the Pooh set. If I do take it down off of the rock platform, what I'll end up doing is taking the treehouse, shifting this over so we have a little bit of a gap here, and then I'll end up turning it about 90 degrees so that little river on the side runs along the back side of the rock platform and then comes all the way over and then down our waterfall and then we'll try to come up with something kind of unique or cool in the middle i'll definitely try to find a couple of cool sets that we can add in up there um, once we take the uh, manor von baron or the haunted house move it down here where the uh, Winnie the Pooh set is, we'll take Winnie the Pooh set, put it over here because we have a big old open greenery area that needs to be filled. So, and I think that this is small enough that, you know, if we put it here, it's not necessarily going to block too much behind it. And it is a smaller set in general. So just will look a lot better there. So a lot to change from there as well, on top of rearranging the entire Lego city. Yikes. And let's get started. Well, everyone, it is out with the old and in with the new view of the LEGO City. I actually had to take a decent amount of time outside of this time lapse to really figure out what I wanted and see what buildings look good next to each other. So I actually ended up FaceTiming a few people as well to get some professional advice on what other people thought. And I think we overall came to a great conclusion as to what looks the best. But after this, I did take a video of my son coming in for the first time, seeing the different view because his first words were weird and obviously kids say the darnest thing. Hey, this is <laughs> How does it look? Hey, this is where it was before. Mm hmm What do you think, Al? Does it look good? Yeah. Yeah? Well, these aren't supposed to be over here. No? You don't think so? Where are they no. supposed to be, boss? They're supposed to be by the police station right here. Now that we've moved most of our modulars around at least once or twice, we have a good look at our new LEGO City layout. Now everything looks pretty good. I do like the new look and we're going to do a quick little high overview of some of the different modulars that we've moved around. And as we're going through, I want to focus on two primary things. The first one being, did we redistribute, redistribute some of the taller modulars within the LEGO City so that everything has just a little bit more character? As well as number two, looking at some of the different colors. Do they mesh well together? Are there certain changes? that we need to be making. So those are the two primary things I want everybody to kind of focus on as we're doing a quick high overview here. As we are going through and looking at some of the changes that we made throughout the LEGO City and its layout, please make sure you drop in the comment section down below if you guys think that there's any other changes we need to make. Obviously, I'm always willing to look at different variations of buildings next to each other just to make sure that the LEGO City looks just the best it can be. So starting over here, we have our first big modular change that we made. We moved the courthouse, which was previously down here on the first tier, moved it up to the second tier primarily because it started covering up too much of the second tier and some of the buildings behind it. And I really like the new layout that we have down here and really still blocking some of the melamine behind it, but really still allowing us to see the road on the backside just so that we can 
make more stories on the backside with minifigures and cars and stuff like that. Just trying to, again, make sure that we have access to all the different roads and modulars within the LEGO City. So I do like that change. With the Jazz Club, all we did was move the Jazz Club from down here. Basically flip-flopped the detective's office in the Jazz Club. And overall, let me know. I think that those colors look pretty good next to each other on the second tier. I think our tans are spaced off pretty well. And overall, the Parisian restaurant being moved over there to the corner looks great. The other changes I want to take a look at are the Daily Bugle and the Bowling Alley along with the Sitcom Tower. Really, all we did was flip-flopped the Sitcom Tower and the Bowling Alley and then moved that access street that was right in between the two down one so that it is sitting still on the corner of the Sitcom Tower. But overall, gives us the ability to reincorporate the corner garage back into our LEGO City, which I am stoked about. Now, so far after making all these changes, we only have one module that is still not able to make it in the Lego City, and that is one of our townhomes from the Birch's book set. So that is unfortunate, but when we're working with a compact space, it is kind of the trade-off that you have to make. Now let's take a look at some of the updates from the greener area. On top of making some changes to the LEGO City, we also have a few updates for the greenery area. On our rock platform, previously we had three modulars, right? We did end up taking off the haunted house, and then we pushed over the tree house so that it did have leave that little opening in the middle here. Now what we'll end up doing is, as it's turned here just a little bit for the tree house, we'll end up carrying this creek all the way down for our waterfall, and then just kind of continuing that down the river. And then with taking off the haunted house, we did end up putting it over here in our empty area for our empty base plate. And it just was too tall of a set. Uh, something I need to look into is potentially modularizing that. I know that there is a rebrickable mock that does that, but I'm really interested to see if that could potentially be worked into the Lego City at some point as well. Obviously, we need a bigger Lego City or bigger area for Lego City in order to do that, but definitely something that will look great as a display set up on our shelf for the time being. Now, the other thing that allowed us to have that empty base plate was moving the Winnie the Pooh set over to the middle. And I think that lat looks pretty good. I really like the different trees for the A-frame cab. And I've mentioned this in previous video of, I want to create more of those trees. And I know Brixie and other um, Lego influencers have done that. And that's definitely something I want to try to do here in the future. But overall, this is looking great. If you guys have any ideas of what we could put here for this empty base plate, please let me know because I'm definitely you know on the market looking to see what I can fill that up with. Now... It is time to go take a look at our Lego Hall slash Lego Mail Day. And it is a pretty expensive one, especially because we've kind of accumulated things over the course of the past few weeks. So let's go take a look at that. Well, the time has finally come, everybody, to talk about our Lego Hall or Lego Mail Day, whatever you want to call it. Really any set that we've picked up here over the past month that I haven't had a chance to display or really just talk about. Now, before we get started, the overall price, if you add everything up, is right around $300. Not anything that I was shooting for the $300 price mark, but just something that kind of happened. So let's jump in and let's get started right, right away. The first thing that we picked up was off of a Marketplace find, and this was the Lego Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine. I was super excited about this. Obviously, grew up watching Scooby-Doo, so this was probably one of my favorite finds here that we've made um, over the past couple months. But um, it is just the Mystery Machine, no figs, which is honestly fine with me because if I start collecting the Scooby-Doo minifigs, I'm going to jump down a dark, dark rabbit hole, especially with Velma costing as much as she does. We're going to stick to just the mystery machine. The next one we picked up just a little over a month ago, actually. I think it was right around like November-ish time frame. But somebody had listed the Steamboat Willie set and it was originally like listed for $120, and I was not about to pay that, primarily because I saw it on BrickLink used, was right around the 85 bucks. I don't know if that was complete, but I do know that that was probably one of the lower price tags that I've seen, and I offered the guy 60 bucks. He came back with confirmed, like, yeah, let's do 60 bucks. So it is a nice, complete set that looks great, has all the minifigures, you know, comes with all of the pieces, came with the box, instructions, and everything. So I'm happy with that purchase and will be a great display on our shelf here in the Lego City. The last thing that was kind of a random purchase that we made over the last month here was from BrickLink. And this was a purchase for one by two panels. And I don't know if you can see them, but they're one by two panels with the divider in the middle. 
I've mentioned this in one of our previous videos, and I'll try to post it up here, is we started collecting Iron Man minifigures. And I'll talk a little bit more about this here in just a minute. But um, with Iron Man minifigures, when you get into some of those older minifigures, they start to get heel cracks or arm cracks. And so one of those things to try to prevent some of the heel cracks is using these to put underneath the feet instead of placing them directly over the stud. So this is one that I was actually pretty excited about because this was like 10 bucks, but hopefully in the long run, it's going to end up saving a bunch of money since we won't be placing those directly on studs. So let's jump into a few other things that we've collected here in the past month. All right. So before we move on, I want to add a little context and a little background information as to what we're going to be opening up for our couple next mail day pieces. Now, previously in one of our other videos, we had talked about how we're trying to collect most Lego Iron Man minifigures. We had, we got on a quick start within our last video. We collected 20. Super excited about it as we got a lot of key um, Iron Man suits and a couple of the other variations. My favorite still being the Avengers Tower. You can see it, the Mark VI right here, the Battle Damage Mark VI. Love that one. Definitely my favorite. But overall, again, I just wanted to set the stage and let you know a little bit more about what we're aiming to collect. And this is why I'm not trying to collect all the Lego Scooby-Doo minifigures because <laughs> I go down a rabbit hole. But let's talk a little bit more about the next Mail Day piece. Now, picking up right where we left off, we have the Iron Man Armory, the older, the original, whichever way you want to look at it. But we picked it up for right around 50 bucks. I was super excited to get this one. 258 pieces was released in 2020, I believe, and then retired here in 2022. So not terribly long ago, but definitely one that kind of shot up in price here. Again, we bought it for right around 50 bucks, right? Pretty much in line with the BrickLink average. We primarily bought it for three of the minifigures. We got Tony Stark, SH-673, comes with the different wings. So it is one of the variations for the um, Silver Hexagon. And then also for the Mark two, which is exclusive to this set as well. So definitely a great pickup. And honestly, I kind of bought it for the hot rod as well that we can put in the streets for the city. So I'm excited about that, but definitely a great pickup here. The next set that we got, honestly, I picked up because I was kind of bored. We were walking around Target. I was walking around Target with my wife and I was like, you know, we're going to grab this. And I don't have this minifigure yet. I believe it's SH910. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but is a great minifigure. And honestly, is going to be one that's added to our collection since we don't have it. And again, we had, it was a sale for like five bucks. So I was pretty stoked to grab it. And then we'll probably end up gifting Thanos to my kids. So I was pretty excited about it. Nothing too huge, but definitely something I figured I wanted to mention. And then one that everybody has been picking up and I've been seeing it on Facebook quite a bit is the uh, visual dictionary. Now it comes with the exclusive minifig. I really like the minifig. I love the printing and some of the detail printing on the legs. Fortunately, you're still not getting the printing on the arms, which I was kind of bummed about, but overall great pickup for um, the visual dictionary. And honestly, my kids have loved going through this. They've thought it was super cool. So I may end up just giving it to them to you know look through. I'm sure it'll get tore up here in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> So before we jump into Minifig Central, one last set I want to talk about or add to the collection, I guess if you want to call it a set, is the Disney Villains Brickheads. This is definitely one I was pretty excited about. Not one that is like super exclusive, has a bunch of unique parts or anything, but one that kind of ends the collection of the different Disney Brickheads that are currently out. So we'll be adding this to the collection and building that with my boys coming up here in the next couple of videos. Now jumping right into Minifigs, the first one that we have is the Scuba Iron Man. This is a really cool minifig one that is probably in my like top five or six favorites of the Iron Man suits. Um, it is the from the Iron Skull sub attack exclusive to that set. Got it for right around $27 after shipping. Very excited about that one. The next two that we have, we have the Blaze and Taser Armors. Um, I believe that's from set 76166. Those are right around 15 bucks a piece. And uh, that's, I believe that's the old Avengers Tower, if I'm not mistaken. Please let me know in the comment section if I'm correct or way off. <laughs> uh, the next one we have is the Iron Man with short legs. I believe this is from like a mini or not mini micros, Might, mighty micros. And this was a, I want to say it was like a six plus or four plus set, but really thought that that was cool. I like the like older style look to it of the different colors that it has. Um, the other two that we got, we do have Iron Venom, which honestly probably one of my favorites as well. I just like the different variations and I'm a big um, Venom fan. So thought that was super cool. Last one. And I believe that one was right around like the $15 mark as well. And then we have the, um, what is this one? It's the uh, pearl gold armor. And honestly, this one was like five bucks. I believe it comes with like a buildable mech and 
was not really anything special. So nothing really crazy there. Going on to our Amazon orders, we do have a few that are cool additions to the uh, collection. We have War Machine, which I was pretty excited about. Thought that that was pretty cool. We do have one other War Machine minifig. So thought figured we add to the collection there. And then we do have the Iron Man and Dummy. Um, so the Iron Man white jumpsuit. Thought that was pretty cool. And again, all these for right around 10 bucks. And then the last one we have the Iron Rescue Suit. I believe this is like the Pepper Potts variation from the movie. So definitely another cool one to add to the collection. And kind of that's that's about all we got for the Iron Man minifig. So a lot that we have in our collection now and a lot that we've picked up in the past month here. All right, so as I was sitting out here adding everything up and the different mini figures, I was like, I feel like I'm missing one. I was like, we have 20, or we had 20, and then we added 13 more. I was just like, something's missing here. And I did end up finding the one that was missing, and I'm not sure why I still have it in a plastic bag, but we do have the Iron Man Heartbreaker variation. So super excited to add that into the collection. Now, I really thought when I first started, I didn't know what I wanted to do for display for all these Iron Man minifigs. And I really thought this like locker style would be cool, unique. I've seen other people do it and it looked good. I just don't love the look of it. So we're gonna be doing something different. We are going to be doing it if you've seen, I'll throw a picture up here. If you've seen our other shadow box displays, I really like the way they look and I'm excited to display them and hang them up in the Lego city. And so that's what we're going to do. I picked up a larger shadow box um, from Michaels the other day, and I'll be doing another video on this as well. So if you obviously missed this, it's okay. We'll be doing another video, but we picked up, I believe it was like a 14 by 18. Yeah, 14 by 18 shadow box. We'll put a background on this. It'll be a Iron Man background, and then we'll add them off. We'll use two by two inverted slopes to hang each of them on the background, just to have a nice way to display them so you can see them every time you go into the Lego city. So that's kind of it for all of that stuff. I'm gonna get those built. In our next video, I will talk a little bit more about them, but I am so excited to get them displayed, use those one by two uh, panels with that divider in the middle to hopefully prevent some heel cracks and really just get them looking well displayed in the Lego room. So thank you so much everybody for coming by. I know it was a crazy video with a lot of moving and shuffling around, but on top of that, it was a ton of fun adding to our collection and I'm excited to get all of those minifigs built and again, add on to what we have. Now, I hope everybody else has a great rest of your week, a great, um, holiday coming up here with the new year. Please be safe and I will see everybody soon.